What's going on? Welcome to Mayo Fitness Testing with Highland Performance. I'm Connor, the personal trainer, and today's just gonna be a quick breakdown of day one of your fitness testing. So for the Mayo Fitness Testing, we're gonna test two things. The first being your 500 meter row, where you're going to just pull 500 meters as fast as you can on an indoor rower, also known as the ergometer. And the second thing we're gonna test is the push-up test. So, First thing you're gonna to wanna to do when you get to the gym is you're gonna to wanna to do some, I'm gonna have a warm up for you in your PDF, but you're going to do things like your cat calves, your shoulder circles, hip cars, mobility squats, all those things that'll just open up your body and get the blood flowing. After that, we wanna get you on the ergometer or the rower. Uh, so we're gonna test that first. And with that, what I want you to do is just row an easy pace for five to 10 minutes at a pace that it feels like you could do forever. And I just want you to do that until you get to a point where you're warm and sweaty. Uh, the minimum is four minutes because that's how long it takes for your aerobic system to turn on. I recommend probably closer to 10. You'll appreciate it if you're a little bit warmer. Uh, you'll just perform a lot better on the actual test. Now, for the scope of this video, I'm not gonna get into how to set it up or anything like that. That's gonna be a topic for a different day. Um, basically, just set the drag to what you're comfortable with you know it ranks between zero to ten for most guys if you're like you know 160 to 180 pounds somewhere around five or six is good those 190 to 200 pound guys around seven on the drag is good 200 to 210 we're gonna go eight 210 to 220 225 we're gonna go nine and if you're plus 225 you can go 10 just as a rough rule of thumb for now so set it to that drag and then you're gonna sit down and you're just gonna pull the 500 meters as fast as you can. Now, the minimum adequate standard, and that doesn't mean you're there yet, is a minute and 45 seconds. So that's the minimum target I want you to aspire to. Although, if you're not in any kind of cardiovascular shape at all, and if you've never really rowed before, don't worry about hitting any target at all. Just row and see what you can do. Um, and just push yourself to what you feel is a suitable limit. Now, if you've been rowing recently, or if you feel you're in very good aerobic shape, I want you to push yourself to the point where, you know, maybe you do feel like you're gonna puke, really go to the edge. Don't go over it, but try to find that wall and hit it. And if you haven't been doing physical activity like this at all recently, I want you to just cruise through it at what feels like just slightly outside of your comfort zone, but never so hard that you're really feeling beat up by it. So. Just don't overdo it if this isn't something you've been building towards or if you're not in good aerobic shape because then what's gonna happen is you're gonna be so wrecked from it that the following day, tomorrow on day two, you're gonna have things like Bulgarian split squats. And if you haven't been doing this kind of stuff or using your legs a fair bit, you're gonna underperform on the following day. So again, if you haven't been doing a lot recently, be very cautious uh, with overdoing the test. Just do it at a slightly faster than comfortable pace. Uh, one other tip is the concept of negative splitting. So a negative split is where in the first half you go slower than in the second half. And the idea there is simple. When we cross from aerobic, which is where we have lots of oxygen and we can kind of go all day, to anaerobic, which is where we're working so hard that we don't have oxygen as available in the muscles, and we start to build up lactic acid and hydrogen ions and our muscles get pumped and we start to feel the burn, the sooner we go lactic, so we start to produce lactic acid, the harder it's going to be to continue to maintain performance. So the idea is to try and stay pretty aerobic in the first half, and then in the second half, to get into that lactic space where it's really burning and hurting. But again, if we do that right off the bat, then you're gonna be anywhere from a minute 30 to two minutes of pure suffering and struggling to perform, versus if you give yourself the first minute at aerobic, so slightly uncomfortable, but still feels like you can breathe and you could probably do it all day. And then in the second half, we're pulling really, really hard. Um, now you're not gonna be completely aerobic in the first half. It's, I can't say it's black or white, and I don't wanna mislead you into thinking that it is. It's a little bit of a continuum where you're on a spectrum and you're shifting back and forth between the two. Uh, but let's say you're aiming for a 145 pace, which would be the adequate target. Maybe you're gonna go out at like a 148, 150, and then you're gonna work your way down so that in the second half of it, after you cross that you know 50 to 52 second threshold, 
you're pulling more like a 140. So, you know, you can vary how much you do split it, but you should always be starting off a little bit slower and ending a little bit faster than your desired time. One other thing is on the display of the ergs, you're sitting there, there's like a square display in front of you and you can change the digits on it. And what you want is to have the display up with your 500 meter pace, because that's going to allow you to uh, track your pace. A lot of the other stuff like watts or like calories burned per hour, it's not gonna be that relevant to your test. So set it so that it's showing your pace for 500 meters. And again, if you think you're really out of shape and you just wanna do like a two minute, then start by pulling about a 205 or a 203 and try to finish somewhere between a 157 to a 155 in the second half. If you think you can hit the adequate target of 145, you know, aim for like a 148 and then try to finish around a 142 or under and really sprint at the end. And same thing goes for if you want to go even faster. Uh, so that's going to be a little bit about the rowing test. Now, as soon as you finish the rowing test, you're going to take note of your time as you hit the 500 meter mark. Also make sure on the display that it's counting your meters up so that you can see when you hit 500 meters. Um, after that, you're going to walk around, rest a little bit for about five, anywhere to five to 10 minutes. Uh, if the test really crushed you, then give yourself the full 10, but take a minimum of five, even if you're feeling pretty good, because we just want to allow our body to recover a little bit and try to stay on your feet and walk, because that's going to allow you to clear the lactic acid and the hydrogen ions and other lactic waste products that have just accumulated primarily in your legs, forearms, and back. Um, so yeah, you want to walk and allow the natural, what happens is the muscles, when they contract, they create a natural pumping effect, which helps to flush everything out of the tissues that you just worked. So that's going to be the rowing test. Now the push-up test, we've rested five to 10 minutes. We're feeling good. If you're feeling totally trashed from the test, rest even longer. Take as long as you need to feel 90, 80, 90% recovered. For the push-up test, uh, you should have a rough idea of how many push-ups you can do right now. If you haven't been doing them at all, maybe you can do five to 10. If you're you know, doing them every now and then, or you're hitting some chest and stuff like that, maybe you're in the 10 to 20 range. If you're doing them all the time, maybe you're somewhere in like the 25 to 50 range or even 50 and above. Um, when you warm up, for anyone who can do push-ups regularly or is relatively adequate at them, just do 10 push-ups for a warm-up set. Uh, if you haven't been doing push-ups at all, just do like three to five. And then we're gonna repeat that again. So let's make it simple, do five. So we're either gonna do 10 or five, depending on if you are comfortable with them or haven't been doing them. And then you're going to do either six, if you've been doing them regularly, or three, if you haven't been doing them regularly. That's gonna be after a full three minute rest. Then you're gonna rest three more minutes. So that'll be two three minute rest periods. And then you're gonna do as many push-ups as you can unbroken. Uh, what we're gonna do here is I want your nose to touch the floor or your chest to touch the floor. I prefer nose because if you do chest first, we get a lot of back arching and your push-ups start to lose good form. So let's go nose to the floor. And I recommend doing it on a mat because you don't wanna smash your nose into a hard surface. And basically we want the elbows not tucked right to the sides, not way out here, but at about a 45 degree angle. That's going to be the best for your shoulders because the shoulder all the way up here, we don't really do this. It's not really a great motion for our shoulder and for our AC joint right here. Uh, but being really tight to the sides is gonna make it very tricep dominant, which is going to shortchange you from getting the best possible score you could. So 45 degree angle is what we're gonna use for the test. You're just gonna do as many as you can. Elbows lock out all the way. So you don't stop here, you lock out every single time. So you're gonna get full range at the top and then we're touching the nose to the floor at the bottom and you're just gonna do as many as you can in a row with no break. If you have to pause for like one to two seconds at the top between reps right at the end, that's okay. If you have to put your knees down or fully rest, then the test is over. So we're gonna do as many as you can, record your max score. After that, I recommend doing 20 to 30 minutes of easy cardio. Again, it's just gonna help flush the lactic acid out of your legs and just help you keep conditioned. And that's gonna be it for the hard work. And then the last thing we're gonna do is you've just done a lot of chest dominant um, work. So we're just going to do a quick pec doorway stretch. There's a video included at the bottom of the PDF, or it'll also be on your trainer eyes account if we're doing it that way. And you're just going to do two minutes aside just to open the chest up a little bit because all of us are too tight through the chest already. And we sit and we're on our phone so much. And when we do something like a push-up test, 
we're going to add even more tension to this region. So we want to open it up a little bit so that we can go into the next day feeling good and injury free and maintain good posture and good performance all the way through of our fitness testing because the testing, let me just check here. Yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be a whole 10 day process. So we want to keep you loose, limber and feeling good so that the things you do on day one and two don't ruin the things you're doing on day five and six and so on. So that's everything about day one. I hope you find this helpful. Everything else you need is in the PDF or on Trainerize. And if you do have any questions, you know how to get in touch with me. I uh, hope you have a great performance on both the 500 meter row and the push-ups. Remember, if you haven't been training recently, don't push to your limits. And if you have, then dig deep and uh, enjoy the burn. All right, we'll talk soon, guys. Good luck.